because as we think about the future of accounting, there are kind of there's some conflicting things at play. So um, the biggest one, and we've hammered on this a ton at Flowcast, we talk about all the time, there's a huge talent shortage in accounting. Fewer people are majoring in it. Um, people are leaving the field. And then with that, business continues to expand. You know, capitalism marches on, companies get bigger, there's more regulation that's thrown out there. So you're losing people and it's getting more complicated. And ultimately it all has to be done properly and done accurately. So right. it feels like, a, like AI is really important for kind of connecting all the dots and allowing us to continue that. I'm gonna turn it over to Chris. Like, how do you think AI will help in that whole equation? And do you think this is a net positive? Well, certainly, uh, you know, the, the talent crunch seems real. So as companies are scaling, they gotta do more with less, right? Less accountants coming into the field. I think in Colin's example, um, you know, that role of the preparer comes into more of a role of a reviewer, right? So that could be a pretty interesting shift. I think also maybe getting out of the nuance and the weeds of accounting and really being, hey, my job is to document what's going on in the business, right? Well, that, that all of a sudden, the role becomes a lot more interesting, right? Maybe we need a rebranding on accounting from in the weeds on the numbers to really you're the historian for the business. That's interesting. That's and really interesting. yeah, you've got to be connected to what's going on. I, I think a lot of times we think about um, AI, it's a real big data problem. And when we think about data and accounting, we're thinking about transaction level details. We got into the transaction matching conversation, right? But as we've seen, and a big reason Flowcast exists is, accounting is a lot more than the transactions in the ERP. Mm -hmm. There's work that needs to be done, there's policies and procedures, there's gap guidance, there's feedback from the auditors, there's top side entries that don't even get booked back into the ERP oftentimes. There's a lot of context in those changes in the business that you're talking about. That's where I really feel like the role of the accountant needs to shift more from that back office to more understanding what's going on in the business in real time so that accounting is part of that conversation, right? And that's something we've been preaching a lot, but I think almost a rebranding on the role from in the weeds on the numbers and the guidance and this is the journal entry you make to, hey, I'm here to document what's going on in the business. I, that's really I think you're going to be able to do more with less. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think you're going to... with. Um, less hours in the day, you're going to get more work accomplished with some kind of AI helper, right? Um, but I think you are spot on when you say that uh, accountants are really going to have to understand the broader context of what's happening in the business more and more. Um, because where LLMs are going to fail is when there isn't an aberration, when mm -hmm. there is something new happening at the company, when there isn't data su to support decisions that have been made in the past. Um, and you're kind of having to... Um, make new decisions about how accounting is going to function, let's say, as the company expands or contracts. Uh, and um, that is, you know, an accountant is going to have to be plugged in to what's happening, what new systems the company is using, what yeah. new employees they're hiring. All that kind of stuff is going to be important for the accountant to know about and be able to keep an eye on uh, and be able to guide the LLMs or, you know, the, the AI helpers as they're helping to do um, more of that manual. Yeah, you almost become like, you almost become a trainer of this staff AI solution you're using. So an example that, as you guys were talking about, you know, we're about to sign a new lease somewhere. So presumably that lease expense is gonna hit our bank account. It's like, or we're gonna pay the lease at some point and it's gonna hit our account. And that's a new thing that, you know, the system's not gonna be aware that, oh, we signed this lease in New York City and now we gotta match it against here. So your job as the accounting manager, whatever your title is, would be to teach your LLM, your yep. matching LLM, hey, we signed a new lease, here's what it looks like, here's what the other account it's booked against, and here's how you're gonna match it going forward. And then you're now the historian of that transaction, you know what happened, you've documented it, you've trained this thing, and then you get to move on with your life and it will just record that automatically going forward. I also think that, that we're still pretty far away from sort of some generalized accounting AI, where it's just like, it does everything, you know what I mean? I still think that it's going to be um, more isolated pieces of technology that do something specific like transaction matching. Uh, and the accountant's job, like they've always done, is going to be um, in part making sure that all that data gets gathered uh, in the right way and fed to those systems mm -hmm. uh, to actually do the work. Right. I, uh, it's a, a, to me, it's a really cool opportunity. There, There's, we talk, 
in business, you talk a lot about the front office and the back office and, you know, accounting's in the back office. But there's also this notion of the middle office. And I feel like AI could pull accounting to more the middle office where you're interfacing with the rest of the front office of the organization, understanding what's going on in the business, like more of the strategic stuff, and then communicating that back to the new back office, which is AI that's doing a bunch of this work. And you get to sit at the center of the company and be yeah. a little more, a little yeah, more in that context. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's more fun. Yeah. That's way more fun way to more think fun. about what, what you're doing and, and rather than just you know, making sure a formula adds up or whatever. I think that the the other thing to consider is that um, it's going to be way easier to commit fraud. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no. Th- that's funny, but tell me more. That's super interesting. I, I think that, like, you know, it's fairly easy to bully uh, LLMs to do the things that you want. You know wow. what I mean? Um, and so I, I think that there are, there's going to be a lot more opportunities for fraud to be committed. Um, and so, like, that portion of an accountant's role is going to be even more important, in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, to make and sure... the auditability of that. Exactly. Everything comes back to an audit and accounting, right? So I, I think the audit profession could change even more than the accounting profession. Interesting. Well, that'll play a lot into the fraud detection piece of it. Woof. I mean, at the end of the day, like, we don't fully know why LLMs make the decisions that they make, right? Like, it's it's a mathematical calculation, and the calculation is so beyond anything that we can consciously comprehend um, that, that it, you know, the choices that it makes are, are just beyond our, our understanding. We can't just ask ChatGPT how it works? Well, <laughs> it, like... <laughs> What would it say? <laughs> I, I mean, we know conceptually how it works. Um, but Give we, me your secrets. I literally have it open. I wanna, I'm going to ask it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Uh, but, but we will never be able to understand like the, the mathematical calculations that are happening underneath the hood. Or at least we don't have the tools to do that today. Um, simply because it's beyond what we can comprehend as a, as a human um, in the same way that you can't think about four or five or six dimensions, really. We can only sort of think in three dimensions um, for the exact same reasons. We can't really fully understand what's happening or why LLMs choose the, the words that they choose. Um, and so, you know, I think that there's always this sort of element. There, if you're using LLMs, there's, there's always going to be this element of risk where you don't, you don't fully know. You, don't, you can never fully trust it. Uh, um, with LM specifically. Um, and so, you know, it's going to be important, again, for, for a human to be in the loop to make sure that, that um, it just, it's a new vector of risk for things like fraud. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, something to keep a top of mind for everybody listening as we move forward with this. I did ask GPT how they work. I got a five bullet answer for it. I thought this was interesting. Training. I was trained on a diverse data set, and it's talking about itself. (laughs) (laughs) Input processing. When you input a question or statement, the model converts into a numerical format that can understand using what's called tokenization. Then there's an attention mechanism, the core of the transformer. It generates responses, and then the output is the final text. There you go. Pretty simple. Five-step process. That's it. That's it. That's all that goes into it. Um, Awesome. Well, this has been super informative. I mean, we've it's crazy. We've talked about AI a lot, but I still... I told you to, I could talk I, at you for... <laughs> I continue to learn from you on a regular basis around this stuff. It's really interesting. And my main takeaway to put into the accounting lens, like, there, there are a bunch of accounts who are scared of it. Like, I've, you know, spoken to classes of students who are like, oh, should I major in accounting because it's all going to be automated? And I personally get very frustrated when you hear that like thrown out there like, oh, accounting's not going to exist anymore. It's going to be automated because that generally comes from people who have never done accounting. Yeah. Like, you know, one of the podcasts we like to bash on a little bit here, uh, they made this when, when ChatGPT first hit the scene and was really blowing up. There was this declaration of like, someone just put all the gap rules into this thing and automate accounting. And it's like, as said by a non-accountant, that's yeah. that like is a perfect, perfect analogy for it. So. I, I would love to get rid of a little bit of the fear mongering around it in the profession. And like, I genuinely think it's the best thing to happen to accounting for a great long time. opportunity and we need it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not just like, a, Oh, this will be cool. It's like, we need it to save us from this talent crunch issue, expanding business. And then it still has to be done properly. It's all got to be done mm-hmm. right at the end of the day. Yeah. And it's hard to say like what accountants will do once their time is freed up. You know what I mean? Like, I think that the, the profession is going to evolve. Um, not disappear. I think that, that uh, the things that accountants are thought of um, 
you know, and treasured by by companies for today, uh, making sure that things are you know on track. We're not committing fraud. Uh, everything is accounted for. Uh, are still going to be valuable skills. Yeah. Well, my my prediction on that is there will be a, a new focus on either driving operational efficiency in other areas or on risk mitigation with compliance. And mm-hmm. if your prediction on fraud is true, then over to the risk mitigation side makes a ton of sense to be looking at all that. Okay. But yeah, an evolution of the role. That'll be cool. <clears throat> all right. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Colin, your insights are amazing. It's so cool. So cool to hear all this stuff. Chris, thanks for joining also. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. All right. Thanks, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the episode.